so it's time for another Blu-ray haul! Cinema Boy, we focus on the film. I'm Josh, this is Simply Cinema. Let me know down in the comments below what items did you pick out last month, whether it's Blu rays, 4Ks, DVDs, whatever sort of collectibles you love in this nerd culture where we talk about the love of cinema as a whole. Make sure to like this video if you enjoy it, subscribe if you haven't already, so you can join the film culture community and just we can all share our love for movies as a whole. This is going to be a little bit in depth talking about the movies. It's not going to be sh short and s sweet for the nature of it, but I'll still go through them rather quickly as I can. First up, we have Amazon Prime Days. We got these four favorites for Dracula's. Last month was vampire movies and my themes. I didn't get to as much as I would have wanted to, but I added a few more to the collection. This one, all of, all four of them star Christopher Lee. I haven't seen any of what he stars in, but I would love to see and explore the different interpretations of Dracula. We got Horror of Dracula, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, Taste the Blood of Dracula, and Dracula AD 1972, which I believe is part of a trilogy or something along those lines. It's They all come from different directors, but they all range around in the 70s, I believe, from what I'm seeing. Oh, there's a 57. And there's some in the 60s, so this is going to be an interesting one to dive into once I really expand upon what I'm able to watch. And this is another one, a different interpretation. We got Frank Langella as Dracula. And by the way, the last one was about five bucks maybe because of the different coupon savings. This might have been seven, six or seven. So not too bad of a deal to just to add another one to the collection. And... We got Van Helsing in this one. I know there's different interpretations of Dracula, whether they have Van Helsing, whether they don't, whether they add Renfield, his assistant, whether they don't. And so it's going to be interesting that the different interpretations just be based on the different characters. So I'm interested to adding this to my watch list. I believe this is a 1979 movie. So that's rather close, but after what we got from Christopher Lee, Next up, this might have been $8 or something along those lines, The Color of Money. I watched this for the first time last year from Martin Scorsese. It turns out this is a sequel to The Hustler, which you don't have to see before this, but this is just really great. It might have been the movie that introduced me to Paul Newman, which I just really loved what we got out of this. And Tom Cruise is great as well. Their partnership, what they get out of this thing for Billards and everything they're doing is just very intriguing and not something I thought I would be fascinated by. Just watching a tournament of pool and being able to like really captivate the scenery with the cinematography, how Martin Scorsese pulls this off is just really incredible. Coming from 1986, and it is one I definitely recommend, and I definitely have to add The Hustler to the watch list. I've seen it on Amazon a few times, not too expensive, so maybe that will appear in a future haul, so I can finally get to that one. Next up, the final, Amazon Prime Days Blu-ray, we got Madagascar Collection. We got a new DreamWorks movie coming up in January. I need to re-watch quite a bit of these. I've seen Madagascar 1 and 2 last year or whatever. I re-watched them. Need to re-watch 3 and The Penguins of Madagascar, which I still need to see. But this also includes 10 TV episodes of The Penguins of Madagascar. As well as three shorts, the Madagascar Penguins and a Christmas Caper, Madly Madagascar, and Merry Madagascar. I have not seen any of the show or the shorts, so especially with that Christmas short, it may be one that I pull out and be able to watch. But I'll be trying to rank the different DreamWorks franchises, and if possible, rank all of them in preparation rank all the whole DreamWorks studio of animation once the Dogman movie comes out late January. So this could be another fun one. It's maybe more silly now compared to when I watched it when I was younger, but of course 
there's a little bit of nostalgia basis on how these movies act as a whole. And next up and final, we got Goodwill. We got a few DVDs that I just figured why not add them? They were two bucks a pop. And so first up we got the ref. This one I got because I saw Kevin Spacey was in it. He's one of my favorite actors. I don't combine what they are as a person into who they are as an actor. What they've done in the past isn't fully affecting my enjoyment experience of what I get out of them. So Regardless of what you think of him, this is Kevin Spacey has been one of my favorite actors. And so just being able to expand this collection, I haven't seen the ref. It is by director Ted Demi. I don't know if that's anywhere in relation to Jonathan Demi, who did Silence of the Lambs. I'll have to look that up for who Ted Demi is all about. I don't think I've seen any of his films either, but... It seems this might have been a movie from the 90s, if I'm not mistaken, but let me know if you watch this or any of these other movies and what you think of them, if I should watch them as soon as possible or not. And we added a few movies. Actually, we'll go on to this next movie, Max Friend, from director Brian De Palma. I figured I'd add another one of his films to the collection. I don't know if this is on stream, but either way, I'll be able to watch this whenever I can. Raising Cain, and this is another one that I need to watch from him. And it has John Lithgow, which I loved his performance in Conclave from past month. And so I'll be able to expand on John Lithgow's filmography as well, which I don't have a wide, knowledgeable basis based on what I watch what he's been really standing out in. Maybe I have seen him quite a bit, I just can't remember him quite as much as like Kevin Spacey, Paul Newman. So either way, I'll be able to watch more of what we got out of Brian J. Palma as the director and John Lithgow. This also has Lolita Davadovich, which it'll be a bit of a thriller, maybe horror in one sense, but either way, I'm kind of intrigued of what we get out of Raising Kane. Like I said, let me know what you think of that one. And these final three that I saved for the end in the same Goodwill haul are Clint Eastwood movies. We just recently got, or this weekend that I'm making the video, we just got a new and final film from director Clint Eastwood that sadly I'm not going to be able to see. It's been released in less than 50 theaters. But either way, I've been trying to watch a few here and there and probably more spread out whenever I can in preparation for whenever I can watch all of them possible Clint Eastwood's final ranking. But this one isn't directed by Clint Eastwood. It's from Brian G. Hudson, but I figured since it does star Clint Eastwood, I'd add this to the collection. I'm a big war film fan, and this also has um, Don Rickles, Donald Sutherland, who recently passed, so I want to expand more of this. I haven't seen this or the next two that I'm about to show you, but it could be intriguing what we get out of this. This looks maybe a little bit more of a comedy. I'm not entirely sure, but it had that Clint Eastwood name on it, so I figured I expanded his collection both with directing and the filmmaking as at, or as an actor as well. Next up, we got Heartbreak Ridge directed by Clint Eastwood. This could be more of a more serious one. It's a war film that I've seen um, and it's from 1986. So I'm really intrigued to see what we get out of this. I haven't heard much about it. Which leads me into the next item. We got Perfect World, also starring Kevin Costner and Clint Eastwood, directed by Clint Eastwood. I'm not seeing it they, this is 19, from 1993, so a little bit later than his previous film. But just being able to expand what I own in the collection. I can't always find them at the library. I can't always find them on streaming. Streaming is really difficult to find all of Clint Eastwood's directed movies. So I'm just really trying to expand that collection slowly and slowly. So being able to add that there just gets me a little bit closer to some of my complete collection and just being able to have it available to watch whenever I need to, whether I try and rush them out 
once I'm able to see the newest Clint Eastwood movie, Gerald 2, or if I just watch them over time whenever I can, whenever I can make the time for it. But yeah, that's just all my Blu-rays and DVDs that I got from Goodwill and the Amazon Prime Day, day deals. Now there's a Criterion sale that is happening now in the month of November. I'm hit or miss whether I'll be going and splurging on that or if I only add a couple items. And I also have a disc replay haul coming in the next week that I'll be adding to the November Blu-ray haul. So I'll be adding a few items at the very least for the next Blu-ray haul that you can expect in the beginning of December. So let me know what you picked up in the month of October 2024. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already to join the film culture community. We'll be talking about a lot of cinema as a whole. So that's just all. Make sure to do yourself a favor and go watch a movie.